Good morning and welcome to worship at First Lutheran Church. Whether you're watching us live right now at 11 o'clock Sunday morning or you catch us sometime later in the week on your own time, we are so grateful for your presence with us as we continue to worship as a community. There are a few announcements I want to bring to your attention, the first of which is something I want you to put on your calendar. Two weeks from today in the afternoon, November the 8th from 2 to 3 in the afternoon, we're going to have drive-through communion. This is a first of its kind here. And you will receive some more information in upcoming e-newses, and it'll be in the November 1st newsletter. So please look for some more information about the logistics of how this is all going to happen. But we hope to see you here on the afternoon of November 8th. Um, and the other thing I wanted to bring to your attention is, you know that we support Out of the Garden Project. They do a fundraising event every year called Hearts of Hope. And First Lutheran Church was, being, was able to be a gold-level sponsor thanks to your generosity and support. So thank you so much for supporting First Lutheran and for supporting Out of the Garden Project. It has been much needed in these past seven months, there have been lots of people who are dealing with food insecurity issues. So thank you for your kindness and generosity. And lastly, we are in the midst of our Mission Appeal generosity campaign. And hopefully many of you were able to receive a blue envelope like this in the mail this past week. If not, hopefully it will arrive shortly. Uh, we also wanted to let you know that you will be receiving by the end of the week, hopefully, a green envelope. We wanted to have them bright enough that you were not tossing them out with all the other junk. <laughs> so please be on the lookout for the blue and the green envelopes and read through those and prayerfully consider how you can continue to support the mission and ministry of this church. Those are all of the announcements that I wanted to bring to your attention, but please know that there are more that can be located in your e-news that's sent out every Thursday afternoon. Please join me in the brief order of confession and forgiveness. Praise and thanks to God, creator, Lord, and companion, eternal source of forgiveness, mercy, and grace. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Awaken us to the power of your Holy Spirit that we may receive your forgiveness, confess our sin, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, we humbly acknowledge before you and one another that we have turned from your ways and we have struggled with the power of sin by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We, we turn, turn to you and, and wish to do better. better. We trust in your compassion as you promise to forgive us. As we renew our promise to follow Christ as our Lord, uphold us by your Spirit so we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. God is rich in mercy and loves us even when we give in to sin and makes us alive in union with Christ. By grace, we are made whole. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. May Almighty, Almighty God strengthen us with the power of the Holy Spirit, so faithfulness, faithfulness to Christ may be our guide. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. <laughs>
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose love sets us free to be people of God. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. Holy God, you are our provider from whom we receive all we need to live. You have loved us and forgiven us first, fully, and unconditionally. Through your grace, we can be a guiding light to show the way in the darkness of fear, judgment, and hatred. Help, Help us live out our, our calling, calling to, to be ambassadors, ambassadors of, of grace for our world, world so, so we can in turn share out of abundance what we have with others. Through, through Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. At this point in the service, as those who have been participating move further away from me, it is now safe for me to remove my mask and have a moment with kids. So if you are there, kids, I would love for you to come a little closer so you and I can have a moment. As soon as I get my mic. <laughs> Mics and masks don't always mix. <laughs> Okay, kids, so I've kind of got a tough question for you today. I wonder how many of you like change? I know change is hard, and I know in these past seven months, you've had a lot of change that you've had to deal with. Your schools went home. You've had to study from home and on the computer. Your parents or other grown-ups around you are working from home. You've got to wear masks everywhere you go, and you can't play with your friends the way you used to. So those are lots of changes that you've had to deal with. And so my heart goes out to you for that. But you know, when I think about change, what comes to my mind are books. 
especially chapter books. And if you were here, I could ask you how many of you have read chapter books before. You know, the, the book is divided into different sections. And as you read, one section ends and then the next section begins. But you have to turn the page. So sometimes change is good when you're going from one chapter to the next in a book. You've got to make that decision that I'm going to end this here. I'm going to turn the page and I'm ready to go on to the next thing. So when you think about all the changes that you've experienced, let's try to think of some of the good that has come from these changes. Maybe you enjoy your family and you get to spend a whole lot more time with them than you ever thought. Maybe you enjoy helping your grown-ups prepare a meal. Maybe you've gotten out into nature a lot more. So Let's look at the good that sometimes can come from change. We can just wake up and decide to turn that page. But I want you to know that I know it's hard. I know it's been difficult. But know that you are not alone. Your church is loving you and praying for you from afar. And never forget, God is always with you. Even when you feel alone, God is with you no matter what. And that's some good news. So let us pray before our service continues. Dear God, thank you for change, although we know it can be hard. We know that throughout life we will have to experience a lot of change. We give thanks that you are with us no matter what changes come our way. Thank you for loving us so much. It is in Jesus' name that we always pray. Amen. Thanks, kids. I've really enjoyed our time together and look forward to the day that I can see you face to face. This lesson comes from Isaiah chapter 43. I am now about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. I give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. Here ends the lesson. I waited patiently for God, for God to hear my prayer. And God bent down to where I sank and listened to me there. God raised me from a miry pit from mud and sinking sand and set my feet upon a rock where I can firmly stand and on my lips a song was put a new song to the Lord many will marvel open eyed and put their trust in God. Great wonders you have done, O Lord, all purposed for our good. Unable everyone to name, I bow in gratitude. From 2 Corinthians chapter 5. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no, no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. 
All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we, am, so we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. Here ends the lesson. Of Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the disciples of John came to him, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, The wedding guests cannot mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them, can they? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old cloak, for the patch pulls away from the cloak, and a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine put into old wineskins, otherwise the skins burst, and the wine is spilled, and the skins are destroyed. But new wine is put into fresh wineskins, and so both are preserved. The good news of God for all people. Praise to you, O Christ. Word that speaks God's tender love, one with God beyond all telling. Word that sends us from above, God the Spirit with us dwelling. Word of truth to all truth lead us, word of life with one bread feed us. So I have a little story to share with you today. When my son Charlie was between two and three years old, he hated to leave the playground. And it got so bad many days that I'd actually have to give him time warnings, counting down to when we would actually leave. I would have to say, 10 minutes, Charlie, 5 minutes, Charlie, 3 minutes, not really realizing that he did not understand the concept of time as much as I did. But I soon noticed that he wasn't just the playground that he would leave, when we would leave, he would act this way. He acted this way leaving church or preschool or the grocery store or his friends' homes. And what I realized, that it wasn't particular places that he had a hard time leaving. It was just change in general. He wanted to keep doing what he was doing and not stop doing it. I get it. But we all know that change has to happen. It's inevitable, right? And he's not much different than the rest of us. And I bet many of us don't like change, whether it's a new job or a moving to a new city or experiencing this pandemic and all the ways it's changed our lives. Speaking of change, there's this running joke about how many Lutherans it takes to change a light bulb. You know the punchline, probably. None, because we don't like change. <laughs> and it's been really heightened since we've had all these changes that we've experienced, like working from home or schooling from home or worshiping away from this building. However, we Lutherans were the original reformers or changers. 
You see, Luther was the first to demand changes be made in how the church functioned, thus beginning this Reformation period back in 1517. You see, Luther didn't want to abolish the church. He, in fact, loved the church very much. He just knew some changes needed to be made as a way to improve our relationship with God and with one another. There had been human elements created uh, that had been added, and it, it was against how he believed God interacted with us and God's intention in how we relate to one another. And this is what we celebrate today on Reformation Sunday, living fully into these relationships. So if we fast forward till today, I'll put forth the argument that we're in the midst of another Reformation right now. And as the late theologian Phyllis Tickle would often call it, the great emergence she proposed an idea years ago how the church goes through a reformation of sorts every 500 years. And she explains that the actual reformation in 1517 was one such event. And if you back up 500 years earlier, it was the great schism of 1054 that divided the church into Eastern Orthodox and the Roman Catholic. And if you back up 500 years before that, it was the event of the Council of Chalcedon in 451, where they were settling the debates over the divinity and humanity of Jesus. And if you back up 500 years before that, it was a period called the Great Transformation, with the changing of the errors we were entering the modern era. And some could also argue that it's not just since the year zero we've been experiencing these 500 years changes. Because if you go back 500 years before that, it was the time of the Babylonian captivity where temple worship was changing. And 500 years before that, they were in the midst of the Davidic dynasty. So if you think about it, is the church in the midst of a great change right now? Are we witnesses to and participants in this great emergence where the church goes through a time of dizzying upheaval and hopeful promise during which various aspects of the church are going to swirl and change? Churches aren't functioning like they did several months ago, which definitely begs these questions. How amazing and remarkable to think that we are in the midst of something historians are going to talk about hundreds of years from now. So let's ponder for a minute all the ways that religion, and not just Christianity or Lutheranism, has had to change recently. For all the world's fates, the coronavirus pandemic has been a head-on collision. You have thousands of years of rituals confession, communal prayers, feasts that are built on the assumption that worshipers could be together and could actually physically touch one another. And suddenly, religious buildings are closed, and while the sharing of bread in communion is now unthinkable. And to make matters worse, the lockdowns coincided with Passover, Easter, and Ramadan disrupting with little warning the most important celebrations of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Despite this, the pandemic has spurred a minor religious renaissance. drive through confessions, communion, drive-in church, commu uh, church on the lawn, as well as myriad streaming options are taking place all across the world. Congregations around the country have actually multiplied after switching to their online platforms. The coronavirus crisis may seem unprecedented, but it has triggered a search for the divine. A quarter of Americans say that the pandemic has actually made their religious faith stronger. Notably, it's not just those who haven't attended in a while or those who are just curious who are using their changed schedules to engage with God. 
because previously active members and even some pastors have experienced a deeper engagement. And when the government basically closed everything down for our safety, the real question became not about whether to obey or not these regulations, but how to continue operations under them. Every faith is innovating, or as we Lutherans say, reforming. (laughs) Jewish seders, the meal held at the start of Passover, and Muslim iftars, the meal that marks the daily end of the Ramadan fast, have been held online. Even Hindu temples have turned to the internet to broadcast arti, which is a form of ceremonial prayer. David Mitchell, who is a rabbi at the Reform West London Synagogue, says this, I wonder what this would have been like if this had happened in the early 80s. And we didn't have all the technology that we have now. I don't know how I'd have ministered to a community in that way. And he continues, I am incredibly thankful that if this terrible thing had to happen, it happened in an era when we could be so deeply connected. I think it's going to change the entire way we think about religious space. And when we go back to being time poor again, people are going to look at ways that save the commute and some of the hassle. And folks, I feel the same way. I'm so grateful for the kind of technology that allows us the ability to continue to worship as a community, although separated by miles. And that the business of the church, as some of us just discovered at our meeting on Zoom, continues. We have to innovate and change the way we do things. For many people, joining online worship is actually much less of a commitment than attending in person. And people who would never walk in the doors of a church are worshiping online. And often many who watch our services don't watch when we're live at 9 or 11, but they find a time that fits their schedule throughout the week and make that connection. So online services have changed the makeup of our congregations. I have heard about relatives in other cities who can now attend the same Sunday service as members of this congregation. And I know this to be the case with a few of our families whose parents are watching from far away. People can also reconnect with churches that they left years ago. And in fact, in just a few moments, we're going to watch a video as part of our generosity campaign from one such person who was a member at this church years ago and has reconnected. And I personally have a friend who hadn't been connected with a faith community that now worships with us on a regular basis. You see, a congregation is no longer defined by geography. And even more unexpectedly, online worship has changed the nature of the worship experience. It's a more intimate medium allowing those worshiping from home closer connection with those leading the worship service. I may be live and in person on your big screen TV now. You're much closer to me than when you were physically in this building. And I bet many of you would say, that it feels like Pastor Jay or I are speaking to you directly through this medium. Change happens. Sometimes it's for the better. It's like what our scripture reminds us today. Don't skimp on the wedding and wine. Excuse me. Don't skip on the cake and the wine at a wedding. You feast, right? You don't just have bread and water. And we don't use new clothes to patch our old work clothes. And we don't put new wine into old containers. Sometimes change is good. And sometimes change is necessary, as we've all recently found out. 
And as much as we don't want to go kicking and screaming away from the playground we're familiar with, sometimes what we're going to is going to be even better. So I want you to dream with me for a few minutes. What are ways to live into this new reality we have in positive ways? Maybe this means you create a Zoom session so your men's group or women's circle can meet. And if you need any help with that, let me know. Maybe you call up a few friends to remind them to donate food or toiletry items to those in need. Or maybe you grab a few people and you physically distant wearing masks on our picnic tables right out here on our property just to catch up with each other's lives. Or maybe... You invite your neighbor to worship along with you online. Doesn't that sound like what church is supposed to be? How are we able to make church still feel like church? Well, you can set aside time each week as a family for church. You gather everyone around the computer screen or the TV as the church begins. You sing along with the music as the service progresses. You pause the video to talk with any children that are around so they understand what's happening at different parts of the service. You be present. You be in the moment and fully experience these holy moments we have with God. Just because you aren't in a church building doesn't mean you can't experience the fullness and wonderment of God. God's good news is still good news for us, no matter where we are. Whether we're watching from Florida or Georgia or Colorado or Wisconsin or Pennsylvania or right here in North Carolina. We are still the church. We're just going through our own reformation right now. And we're so thankful that you're along for the ride. Amen. As our service continues, we speak the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As I mentioned in my sermon just a moment ago, we have a video from a former member. Take a look. Hi, First Lutheran friends. My name is Anna Durham, formerly Anna Tucker, and I guess you could say that I am a First Lutheran graduate. Um, I attended First Lutheran back in the 90s, early 2000s, um, which does not seem like that long ago, and yet here we are in 2020, so I'm not really sure how that happened. Um, But I was talking to Pastor Jay a couple of weeks ago, and he asked me to make this quick video about what my faith has meant to me, what First Lutheran has meant to me, and what First Lutheran's outreach in particular has meant to me. Um, I moved to Missouri from North Carolina in 2003, and right off the bat, I started to struggle to connect with churches in Missouri. Um, Missouri Synod does have a little bit of a different philosophy than what I was raised with in the ELCA, and it made it a little hard to connect. Um, With the ELCA, I always knew that ministry through service was 
going to be an important part of my life and going to be something that um, that would guide my footsteps and I have since become a social worker and that ideal has really carried me through. It guides my practice, it guides not just who I am but how I am and how I live my daily life. Um, so when I moved to Missouri um, and struggled to, to find a home church, it was tough for me. I actually spent um, a good bit of time emailing Pastor Charlie back in the day trying to find a church that I could I could feel at home at and I never really did. Um, unfortunately I've, I've attended several churches over the years and just never really connected the same way that I did at first. Now with that said First Lutheran does set the bar very very high. Um, first is just an exceptional example of what a church should be. Um, but the long and the short of it is that I don't regularly attend church um, as much as I would like to and, and where I would like to. Um, so on Easter Sunday this year, it's kind of a funny story, I was uh, standing in my kitchen cooking dinner, getting ready for my husband to come home from work. Um, we were going to have Easter dinner and I was baking a cake and scrolling through Facebook as you do. And I noticed that First Lutheran was streaming, live streaming, um, the Easter Sunday service. I thought, oh, that's awesome. Okay. I'm going to throw that up on my television set. I cast it up to the television set. And as I was cooking my Easter ham and chopping things, I watched the church service and I sang the hymns and I spoke the liturgy um, and it felt so good to be connected to what I still consider to be my home church. Um, it felt amazing to see people that I knew, to see places that I knew, to see Jeremy Streba's mom singing in the choir. That was fantastic. That was fantastic for me. It legitimately brought tears to my eyes and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Um, you know, and when it came time for um, for communion, I was entirely unprepared. I cut a slice off the cake that I had just baked, um, and I poured a slash a splash of my uh, my red wine into a little a little measuring cup, and I had communion standing right there in my kitchen. And it sounds silly, but it really made me feel very connected um, to where I came from and to who I am. And that's something that I had not experienced in quite a while. Um, so when Pastor Jay mentioned that, you know, that the church is exploring different methods of outreach, um, different different technological pathways, I just wanted to throw my throw my two cents in and let everyone know how something so simple as streaming to Facebook Live can be so meaningful to someone who's so far away. Um, my husband and I, my husband's in the Air Force, um, we're at Scott Air Force Base right now in Illinois, and there's not a lot of chance that we're gonna, we're gonna return to North Carolina um, anytime in the near future. But knowing that on a Sunday, I can just Flip on, flip on my phone and tune into the service and attend church when otherwise I would just be sitting reading a book or, um, you know, going grocery shopping is incredibly meaningful and reassuring. And I want to say thank you for giving me that opportunity and how much I hope that it's able to continue because it truly is, it truly is a ministry of service and a strong point of outreach. I hope everyone is doing well. I miss you guys. Um, and thank you for this opportunity to, to visit and share my experience. Thanks.
confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Good and gracious God, our world is changing in ways that we never imagined. We are in need of your unwavering love. We live in a world which holds so much pain and need, need for hope, peace, love, justice, and heartfelt understanding. Comfort us and strengthen us. God, our world might be changing, but you are changeless. You remain with us. Help us to find new ways to live and to love, acknowledging our diversity and honoring our differences. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Holy God, relationships seem to be ever-changing. When things fall apart, we ask that you bind us up, heal our spiritual brokenness and pain. We know, Lord, that you are a part of all of us. And so we know that you deeply care for all of our relationships, whether connections with family, friends, colleagues, and neighbors, or in our expanding interactions around the world. We ask that you bring your peace to us all. We are so grateful that although our human relationships might be shaken or fall severely apart at times, your spirit is woven into every part of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, help us to witness the compassion and patience around us. Help us to seek clarity of mind and to let impulses pass, replacing them with wisdom and improved judgment. So much happens in the literal blink of an eye. We are continually caught off guard as so much is happening seemingly everywhere in the news that we pray for those in literal storms and winds way. Help us to not turn off our sense of caring in the face of all of these deep troubles. Restore our value that unity and faith are the tender for our goodness and creative selves. Help us to focus on the simple acts of the heart and remind us that words matter. What we read, write, and say, what we print and broadcast matters. Help us to understand how easily our words can be like stones, our very speech setting forth destruction and killing. So open our eyes, soften our touch, and lessen our anger. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, day by day, those we know and love are dealing with pain and suffering we wish we could just take away. As you continue to hold them, show us ways we can show up for them as your hands and feet. One way we can be there for them is through prayer. And so we lift them to your ear today. We pray for Alan on the recent death of his aunt. We pray for Matt and Christine, Howard and Evelyn. Catherine, Bob, John, Grace, and Mary Ellen, Earl, Larry, B, Harry, Nina, and Sandy, Melissa, Ilsa, Nan, Cheryl, Hazel, Bob, and Ray. We also pray for those we know and can name in the silence of our hearts. Provide them with your love to help them as they face each new day. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this point in our service, we are preparing for communion. So if you have your elements with you at home, you may get them out now. Those who are here present today will receive their communion at the end of our service. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Bless
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. And we remember our Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed. He took bread and he gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, shared it with all of them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's life, death, and resurrection as the foundation of our lives. And together we pray. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and and the glory, forever and ever. ever. Amen. And so as we share communion with those that are with us, remember this is the body of Christ given for you, and this is the blood of Christ that is shed for you. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. May the risen presence of our Lord Jesus Christ and the life-giving love of Almighty God, our Creator, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
Thank you for your presence with us today. It makes it feel a little bit more like home. And now go with Christ and go as Christ to love and serve God's world. Thanks be to God.